Hi, and welcome to the ASP video training series. In this video, we'll be going over how to install drywall. Cutting drywall requires the use of sharp utility knives, so be careful and always cut away from yourself. Sanding drywall produces a lot of dust, so isolate the room to minimize dust from getting all over the house. Drywall can be patched, overlaid, or installed directly to the studs. In this example, we'll be overlaying tired paneling that is full of holes. In addition to that, we'll be installing trim in the corners and at the ceiling to minimize the need for finishing work. To cut drywall, use a utility knife and a straight edge. One side of the drywall paper needs to be scored, then snapped, and then the other side of the paper can be cut. To cut out outlet boxes and lights, use a jab saw. If drywalling ceiling and wall, make sure to drywall the ceiling first so that the edges of the ceiling drywall are supported by the wall drywall. Drywall should be attached every 12 inches with drywall screws. The screws must be driven enough to have a dimple that will be filled with mud, but not overdriven to the point where the paper breaks. The use of a dimpler bit will help drive the screws to the primo depth. Hang drywall, making sure to leave at least a half inch gap between floor and bottom of the drywall. Also make sure that all joining seams are tight, since they will be easier to finish. Finishing drywall with joint compound takes practice, and the seams we are avoiding finishing are often the most difficult to master. The long seams of drywall have indentations from the factory that make it easier to have a smooth product, so we will discuss how to achieve good results with the mudding of these seams only. Once all drywall is hung, make sure to check that all screws are properly driven and mudding can commence. Mix mud prior to using. This will help achieve a smooth finish. The use of troughs and clean drywall knives is critical for good results. You will need to use either paper or mesh tape. Use what you are comfortable with. Paper tape has to be embedded in mud, while mesh tape usually does not. In this video, we are using paper tape. To use paper tape, start by spreading mud over seam with a 6-inch knife. Gather mud on your knife, knock off the edges to avoid ridges, and vary your pressure and angle to transfer mud from knife to wall. The more perpendicular the knife is to the wall, the less mud will transfer. The more parallel the knife is to the wall, the more mud will transfer from the knife to the wall. Place tape in mud and cut with drywall knife. Remove the excess mud from the wall with high pressure, making sure no air bubbles are trapped behind the tape. After tape is set, hit all the screw holes with mud, and then let it dry. After it's dry, you can step up to the 8-inch knife. Gather mud on knife, knock off mud from the edges, and apply mud to the seam. It will take practice, but use pressure and angles to achieve a smooth finish along the seam. And don't forget to hit those screw holes again. After a coat with an 8-inch knife, let dry and knock down any ridges with a knife or sanding screens. Follow with a 10-inch knife using the same method as before. Rinse and repeat with the sanding and knocking down of ridges. If you use light enough coats, a wet washcloth can do most of your sanding and minimize your dust. After three coats, check the progress and quality. If you're not quite happy with it, go ahead and step it up to a 12-inch knife and hit the seams and screw holes again. Clean knives and troughs will help with a smooth finish. It takes three to four coats, so don't cake the mud on. We are looking for small coats that build up to a flat, smooth finish. Sand or scrape bridges down after each coat. Now, the final sand is in order. Wet sand where you can to minimize dust. The final product should be smooth and free of ridges or divots. These are harder to fix after the paint is on. Drywall finishing is fickle. That's why we are recommending installing trim over seams where you can. But remember, without joint compound, there is no air sealing. So when using trim in corners and seams, make sure to caulk to provide this seal. Choose the trim that works best for your needs. You can use quarter round in the corners, which works great, or for your vertical seams, you can use a flat stock trim. This trim can be painted to match the wall color or the baseboard, depending on what your family wants. Using trim at the seams can be a lot easier than finishing those with joint compound. Use the method you're most comfortable with to make sure it looks nice. Hey, thanks for watching this video. We sure hope it's been helpful. Drywall projects are great at renewing old rooms, improving the air sealing, and getting your entire group involved. If you need further guidance, check out our construction manual at ASPHome.org.